Hello, I'm Eli for Edu for Hava, and this is tutorial number one of Spring Framework. What is Spring Framework? Spring Framework is a container, an object container. Imagine it is a recipient with objects floating inside. It's based in the control inversion paradigm or dependency injection. To understand this, we're going to have to see some things first. Let's go to the first point, object container. Why a container? For what? Let's study the necessity of an object container. Firstly, we're going to talk about the object, orientated programming. Why was it developed? It was developed to divide the systems or programs in reusable objects. We divide a big problem into small problems. Each object will be in charge of a part of the problem and the best thing would be that we could use each of them. We could take the object and modify it. Um, we don't want to have to get all the objects. If I want to change something, I go to the object, modify it and everything works. Unfortunately, the objects of a system work hand by hand with other objects to do their work. We have a lot of objects, but as it is just one program, one object, object asks for something to another object. He does something himself and he returns it. In fact, the reality is that there are a lot of objects which interact. The problem of this interaction is that the objects are dependent one for another. One object depends on another object. This last one depends on another object, etc. How can we resolve this problem of dependency? Let's see it with an example. We go to this package com.edu4hava.spring.noContainer. I have a problem which happens many times. In this case, we're going to have a customer service, a customer relation office, office which has several methods. Send urgent, send normal and send all. Here uh, we have the customer relation office class. We have a problem which creates a new object of delivery service. In fact, delivery service is an interface, so we are really creating a new object of mail delivery service. It will send information by mail, by ordinary mail. It creates this object and when the method send, send urgent is called, the first one we've got here, it is send. If it it is not urgent, it is kept in a collection called messages and when somebody asks to send them all, there are send. Imagine this is sent once a day or every time a messenger comes or because it's cheaper to send all the messages all together. This customer relation office class is a customer service. This custom relation office is using the traditional mail delivery service, this class, which implements the mail, the delivery service interface. If we come here and we see that the variable which contains it is delivery service, this is well programmed because as you can see this class doesn't use mail delivery service, it uses an interface in between. In the book called The Gang of Four, it's a famous book about patterns. In this book, the authors explain how to develop object-oriented programs. One of the practices um, they describe in it is a principle called separated implementation from interface. It is also called programming against interface, not against implementation. Basically, they say that um, basically they say uh, that the object uh, customer relation office 
which is going to use electronic delivery service shouldn't make reference to this object. Instead, it should refer to the interface, the delivery service, um, and not the one which implements it, electronic delivery service. Not on the specific class. In, it should um, depend on the interface and not depend on the class which has the code of how it does it, which will be electronic delivery service. This is what it should do. And then that's the interface. And electronic delivery service is how it does it. The class should depend on the interface and not on the one we are using. Why? Let's imagine we have this office. The program is sent to the branch number one and branch number two of the office says, uh, I want that program too. But branch number two doesn't use mail delivery service. I send my mail to my clients through electronic ways. As you can see, branch number two has another way of working. Customer relation office works in the same way. But instead of sending the mail through a mail delivery service, it does it through an electronic delivery service, devices. It does it through electronic devices, SMS, mails, Facebook, etc. For this, we should modify the program. Thankfully, we have worked with an interface. And due to this, we have little to modify. But we do have to modify something. As you can see here, we did a new mail delivery service and now what I should do is change this for this one. It was good we program against the interface because this is the um, this is the interface and the interface didn't change the delivery service. But it's not so good that we had to change part of the program. This is what we're changing now this new. This new, in fact, is very bad. It generates a dependency. We are going to see the dependency here. You can see it here. What does this mean? That this class, if it has a new uh, electronic de um, delivery service or mail delivery service, has a very strong dependency of those two. Customer Relation Office is dependent on electronic delivery service and mail delivery service. We can't change this class without changing the Customer Relation Office. Maybe we can think that this is not so big problem because we just have one class, but imagine if we had thousands of them. In the past, I worked for a project which had a hundred thousand classes. Classes. How many classes would have to be modified if, for example, mail delivery service was changed? Uh, we had to change this one and the this one too, and maybe hundreds. And we have to search for them in between thousands of classes. We have to read the code of every one of them to see how to take them out. It's very important to keep everything independent. How can we do this? At this point comes uh, the container. The container is going to explain how to keep um, everything independent as we want to do here. Let's not look at this example of non-container for a while and let's look at the example with a container. We have a new class called container. We can see that this class has inside a hash map, a static map, which has an initialization method for the map. It is also a static method which creates the hash map and inside the hash map the new creation of the objects which are going to be used and which are kept in the hash map. For example, we can see a new object of customer relation office which is kept inside the hash map components. The same with happens with mail delivery service, which is also here we have a new mail delivery service and it's inside the components with a name, delivery service, as well as with customer relation office. This class 
container is going to contain inside a hash map all of the components. It is going to have a method get component so that the rest can ask the container for the components. Our custom relation office class will be like this now. Instead of creating a new object, he will ask the container for a component. The component will be given to the container. This means that delivery service doesn't depend on any class. It only depends on the interface and on the container. There is no dependency between this class, customer relation, office and the implementation of the object. As you can see, it only depends on the interface, delivery service, and it, it depends on the container which we've seen before, which gets the component. Okay, let's see. This graphic uh, was the one we had before, where we had dependencies with the object involved in the application. This was very bad because normally the objects of the application change and every time an object changes, it has impact in hundreds or thousands of objects in the application. Once we include the container, the new situation is this one we have here, where there is no dependencies between the main class and the implementation of the objects. And the change in the implementation, implementation of any of the objects doesn't impact on the rest of the objects. This is a better situation than the one we had before. The problem we have now is that we have a dependency with the container, as we can see with this red line. This dependency is just one, but really there are hundreds or thousands of cl classes which need an object and ask for it to the container. So now we don't have a dependency between the objects of the application, but we have a dependency on the container. We have a lot of dependencies with the container. This is not as bad as the example from before, because a container doesn't normally change a lot, but it can change. So it w could be a problem in the future, in the past, each company of the Java technology industry created their own container to resolve this problem. At one moment, the Java Community Process Committee defined a standard, and this one was the Enterprise Java Beans container. This was a lot better than the situation we had before, because the standard container was made between a lot more people, but they still suffer on, on dependency. Nearly at the same time as when um, Enterprise Hubber Beans 2 was created, the Spring Framework appeared. This Spring Framework made a revolution, revolution in the Java industry. Mainly because it um, made this dependency disappear. It was um, a container which had no support from the Java community process, but uh, solved the problem, solved this problem. It became um, very famous and a de facto standard even without the support of this Java Community Process Committee, which uh, had the main companies of the industry in it, and which took part of this community, community didn't support it. Spring Framework solves the, this problem using, as we had talked before, the so-called control inversion or the dependencies injection. Both console inversion and dependencies injection will be explained in the next tutorial because there's no more time, time in this one. See you in the next one. Bye.